There are several beauty products in this video that have wowed me every time I've used them. I can't wait to share them with you. I have a couple of fails to share too. These are my favorite and least favorite beauty products and a few lifestyle products too. Over the past month, the products that have stood out to me the most, either in a really good way or a really bad way. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new and let's go ahead and get into these current favorite and least favorite products. My hair is extremely flat today. I'm testing out some new hair products and it's not really going that well. I tried to do this kind of household situation, thinking it might help, but it really hasn't. I also filmed some application clips you'll see throughout this video, which made my bangs go kind of haywire. So we're doing kind of a split bang situation. So if you're wondering what's happening with my hair today, why it keeps looking like it's glued down to my head periodically, that's why. But I do want to say thank you so much for your kind words about the new bangs in my recent videos. I was not expecting such a positive response. It's so nerve wracking to make any kind of change when you're on camera like this. You never know what kind of feedback you're going to get. And some people can be kind of brutal in the comments, but the feedback has been great. Even the constructive criticism feedback has been really, really good. I'm still not sure what I'm doing right now. I kind of feel like I might let them grow a little bit so I can sweep them to the side simply because of what I do day in, day out. It's a little hard with a full frontal fringe. I don't know. I'm still playing around with them, still thinking. So thank you again for your kind comments and let's get into the first product. So we have a product I briefly mentioned in a trying new makeup video. I wanted to give you an update on the Dermatology Luminous Eye Corrector SPF 41. I have continued to use this. I really enjoy it. I have it in shade medium and I'll just try and, and swipe this lightly here on the back of my hand. So you can see it's just a light peach corrector. This is an all-in-one corrector that gives you really nice hydration and anti-aging benefits. There are ceramides and peptides in here along with broad spectrum mineral SPF and of course correcting discoloration with a nice peachy undertone. It's very creamy and yet it sets down enough to where it doesn't crease a lot if you want to wear it alone, but it also layers well under various concealers. A little bit goes a long way and I've just really been enjoying this on a day-to-day -day basis. Now my one complaint is that you really have to be careful and gentle with how much, or I should say how little you press out at a time. So I do have to just be aware of how gentle I press down so that too much doesn't come out because a little bit more tends to keep coming out after I've let go. I think I saw on Instagram that they had launched this and I was curious about it because I always test out under eye concealers and correctors. I'm really glad I got this to test. I am going to continue to use it as a daytime under eye corrector because it has SPF and I feel like any little bit of extra protection we put around our eyes is beneficial. You can also use it on your eyelids. Next up is a setting powder I've been extremely impressed with. This is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Shine Controlling and Blurring Setting Powder. So even though it says it's shine controlling, it's not a flat mat. I'm able to use this on my dry under eyes as well as the rest of my face, which is combination oily and it works beautifully on all areas of my face and it gives a natural soft matte finish. It, it blurs and diffuses and does a great job of setting my makeup. So I got it in light vanilla. I thought that would be a nice translucent shade for my light medium skin tone and it works really nicely. I do love the jar it comes in. It comes with a poof that sits in the top and then it twists open. The shape of the poof matches this shape. So if you want to dispense it this way a little bit at a time, you can, or you can do like I do and place the cap on, turn it upside down and dispense some into the lid. Now, the first time I dispensed powder in the lid, it didn't look like it was as finely milled as they say it is. But once I dipped my first twist, into it. I think it was a brush. I could see how finely milled it actually was. Now they don't claim this is a talc free powder, but talc is not listed in the ingredient list. I know a lot of you are looking for talc free powder options.
skins. This has cornstarch and kaolin clay to help mattify the look of skin. It's also got an amino acid derivative that works as a skin softening agent and squalane. So no matter if I'm setting my under eye area or pressing it into my face to really lock it in and give a supernatural look, or if I dust it on with a brush, it just looks nice and natural and works really well to lock in my makeup. I've just really been enjoying this setting powder and there's no scent. I know that's something else a lot of you look for. I wasn't expecting to like this as much as I do, but I've been reaching for it frequently. Since one of the two bronzers I'm sharing with you today is also from Makeup Forever, let's go ahead and talk about that one. So this is their new Artist Longwear Skin Fusing Matte Powder Bronzer, another long name. I got it in the shade Fiercy Amber, which is described as a medium bronze with a warm undertone. This has a skin fusing texture that is supposed to last a long time on your skin. And even though it's called matte. I also think this just has a natural finish on my skin. You saw how that just glided on the back of my hand with no patchiness whatsoever. There's virtually no kick up when I dip my brush into this and when I tap my brush immediately onto the back of my hand or onto my face, there's no clump of bronzer or no patchiness that I have to buff away. It's a nice sheer buildable formula that's extremely easy to work with. I mean a few swipes and I am done. And it does, in fact, last all day long. This is a great formula that I've really been enjoying. If you live in a hot, humid climate, this might be a formula you want to check out for longevity purposes. Glossier expanded their cloud paint line with gel cream bronzers. The blushes have been popular for many, many years and they're pretty pigmented. So I was really curious about this formula, how it would work for a bronzer. I grabbed it in the shade Dune and you can see that shade right here above the Makeup Forever Fiercy Amber Powder Blush. They're pretty close in tone. You could layer these over one another and they work really well. So this is more of a sheer buildable gel cream formula that gives a light natural finish. I find I can apply a nice light wash and get just a hint of color and be done or I can layer and get more warmth. These have a nice silky even application to them that applies beautifully over my skin or over foundation. I was a little worried that they might lift up my foundation because of the liquid formula, but they don't. They also have blurring powder pigments in them for a diffused, soft, seamless finish, and so you don't get streaking, and I find I get no streaking, no patchiness. These are just easy and effortless to use, and I wasn't expecting that. I thought I was going to try this and come back to you and say they were just okay, but I have actually really been enjoying this. Now, my question mark is how long this tiny little tube is going to last. You're covering a bigger surface area since it's a bronzer versus a blush. It's also more sheer, so you're layering it. You're just going to use more of this than you will the blush cloud paints. So obviously the verdict is out on that since this is still a new product. I love what's inside here. I just don't know how far this tube is going to take me, but it's a good product. Innisfree launched a new daily mineral sunscreen with SPF 45 and I grabbed it right away to test it out because I love the original mineral sunscreen that they have. I want to say it has SPF 36. It's now in new packaging. It looks pretty much like this except instead of blue writing it has yellow writing. So if you also like that and you're looking for it, it has a new look now. So this is the daily UV defense mineral sunscreen green broad spectrum SPF 45 and how they differ is in the finish. I think the other finish is a radiant finish, which even though I have combination oily skin, it was never too radiant for me. It was just a nice satiny, natural, glowy finish. It doesn't make me greasy or anything like that. This one is a satin finish and it has a green tint to it to color correct. Now, when I saw this was a green tinted mineral sunscreen to neutralize redness, I got excited because I have a lot of 
red that comes through the surface of my skin. It's also got eight types of hyaluronic acid and some soothing ingredients that I found intriguing. I also wanted to see how it differed from that original version. So you can see on the back of my hand that green tint is more of a light whitish mint green. I didn't really find it did a lot to neutralize my redness to correct by the time I, I blended it all in. At first it doesn't look like it's going to to blend in. It does look like it's going to leave a, a bit of a white cast. I'm actually not sure on deeper skin tones if it will leave a white cast or not. If you've tried this and you have a deeper skin tone, let me know if you get a white cast with this. Some days I felt like it made me look pale. Other days I felt like it, it sunk in all the way. The other version never gives me a white cast. It's one of the things that I love about it. It soaks all the way in very easily. This took a while longer, but my big negative with this is that it pills with a lot of my makeup that I apply over it. Sometimes it was primer, sometimes it was foundation. It was always a question mark for me whether or not it was going to pill. I, I don't know why that is, but the other one never did that. So I was hoping this would be a success because of the higher SPF, but unfortunately this is one of my fails this month and I really do like this brand. I do love the other one, so I'll have that one linked down below along with everything else I'm sharing today and any videos I happen to reference as I always do. Most products uh, hopefully will be linked through the YouTube shopping icons but they don't always have everything available for me to link for you so be sure to check my description box if you're looking for specific products if you don't see them through those YouTube shopping icons but this was a fail. I have a new favorite brow pencil. This is not a phrase that comes out of my mouth very often. I usually have a favorite and I stick with it for a really long time time. I have sparse, uneven brows, and I like to mimic brow hairs as closely as possible. I've shared new favorite brow pens, but not pencils. So this is precisely my brow detailer from Benefit, shade 3.5. I almost think I could go for shade 4, but my brows get a little bit lighter in spring and summer, so I'm sticking with 3.5. This has a 0.8 millimeter tip. It is so thin that they have this extra little plastic area to help with break prevention. This gives the most precise hair-like strokes that I've ever gotten from a brow pencil. It's the closest I've gotten to a brow pen stroke without actually using a brow pen. And you need more precision and more time to sit down and use a brow pen, at least I do. This is so quick and easy to use and it's pigmented. It's not waxy at all. I don't even know if you could see that stroke I just made. It's so fine. But if you want to go a little bit heavier, you can. There's also a nice spoolie on the other end, as there should be. I can get such nice quick results with this. Plus it's fudge proof, sweat proof, waterproof. So it's going to last you all day. I'll tell you how much I love this. I bought it, fell in love with it, used it daily, and then something happened to it. It just poofed. I have no idea where it went. I'm sure it'll turn up at some point, but I didn't want to live without it. So I immediately went out and bought another one. It's what I've been using every day since I discovered it. This is hands down my favorite brow pencil now. This is not what's on my lips right now. We'll get to that in a little bit, but I wanted to share this because I've been reaching for it consistently since I got it. We are having a theme in this video with several products. So this is somewhat new from Ola Henriksen. This is the Pout Preserve Peptide Lip Treatment. Now this product has been around, but they added three new flavors or scents. I got Strawberry Sorbet. I love everything about this. I'm kind of mad I didn't discover this originally. I don't know how long it's been out, but I'm glad I, I picked it up to try when the new flavors launched. So the, the scent, it's got this natural strawberry scent that I just love and it glides on easily. It's got that nice slanted applicator. The texture of it, I would describe as a hybrid between my beloved Too Faced Kissing Jelly glosses and Aquaphor. It's not quite as thin as these. These aren't super thin, but it's got a little bit more to it than that. There's no stickiness. It stays on your lips a really nice amount of time, and it has lip 
specific peptides. And if you're a subscriber of mine, if you have been following my channel, you know how strongly I feel about peptides in lip products, specifically tripeptide one, because it can help give your lips more definition, especially around the perimeter. That's why I love Drunk Elephant Lippy Balm so much because it helped regenerate the definition around the outer perimeter of my lips. Sometimes I get asked if I'm wearing a lip liner. I'm not. I used to have almost no pigmentation. It was very very uneven and it really helped with that. And this has that ingredient in there plus some other peptides. They also help your lips look fuller. There are also some butters and oils that help soothe, condition, moisturize, and soften your lips. And I just, I love everything about this and I, I reach for it regularly. Let's talk about what's on my eyes and my cheeks today. I wandered into the Mac store the other day and I spotted two taupey silver eyeshadows that weren't too silver. They looked wearable enough for every day. And so I decided to grab the one that had less glimmer particles that I could wear during the day and not feel like it was, you know, too dressy. Now that shadow is right here and I'll swatch it for you on the back of my hand too. The name is is spelled L-E-S with periods in between each letter artiste. So I don't know if it's L-E-S artiste or if it's late artiste. It doesn't really matter. What matters is how beautiful it is. I swiped it on my lids with a finger today. You can shear it out a little bit more if you want to, but I have just been loving this. I also love that I can wear it at night and get some really special looks from it. I also grabbed a blush. I want to say I was watching Daisy Cash's channel and she mentioned that MAC Sun Bask was Giselle's go-to signature blush. So when I was in MAC, I had to check it out and it is what I have on today. I have on no highlighter. You know, I had a similar blush from Becca that I just loved, especially for spring and summertime, late spring and summer. It gives that kind of sun-kissed look. It's got that bronzy terracotta vibe to it. And this is that blush. So if you are also looking for a similar blush, or if you've been wondering about Giselle's blush because she's always had that glowy terracotta bronze look. Give this a try, MAC Sun Bask. It is gorgeous. And yes, it does have some glow to it. It's kind of a blush a highlighter all in one, but it's not sparkly. It doesn't exaggerate any texture that, you know, I don't want to see emphasized. It's really a beautiful shade. And I think it would be especially beautiful on those of you with tan and even deeper skin tones. Speaking of deeper skin tones, let's talk about this newly released shade from One Size. They released a new shade in their 3D Cheek Clapper Blush Trios. This is Gorly Pop. And while it was not a success for me, this is going to be stunning on deeper skin tones. So you have a cream blush, a powder blush, and then a highlighter. And I swatched them all on the back of my hand. So you could clearly see how much pigmentation you're getting here. Even with a light hand on my light medium skin tone, this is just too much. I am kind of interested to try different shades in this product because I enjoyed the texture and application of these top two products. And I have seen them on deeper skin tones on social media and it's really, really stunning. Now, for me personally, this highlighter I could do without. I could I could have it be just a duo. There's a little bit too much sparkle glitter in this highlighter for me. It's not as much of a natural look as I prefer. I wanted to share it with you though because it is a new shade and I know a lot of people have been curious about it and I mean, you get some pigmentation here. I mean, you can obviously go in with a lighter hand at first and build it. It's very customizable and it pops. Now, I finally finally tried the one size on till dawn mattifying waterproof setting spray. I don't know what took me so long to try this. This is not a new product and tons of people rave about it. This setting spray will lock your makeup in perfectly from morning until the next day if you need it to. So if you are looking for that setting spray and you have, I would say, oily to normal skin. This has alcohol in it. It could be drying if you have dry skin, but it 
works. Now it's an aerosol too, which I know a lot of people are gonna like because you get that super fine mist. I'm not gonna spray it directly on my face because I'm in the middle of testing a foundation and I need true longevity, not longevity with setting spray. It has a green tea extract and witch hazel to help with the look of pores and to absorb oil and give that blurred finish. Now, one thing that scares some people about this product is when they see that butane is in here, it's an aerosol, so it has to be listed. It is in the can and used as a propellant only and it dissipates immediately upon being dispensed. It's in compliance with international regulations and is deemed safe by the US Environmental Protection Agency. So I just wanted to make that note Really quick in case you look and you see that in the ingredients that is why there is a scent to this this smells a lot like strong hairspray to me when I first spray it I don't notice it though after it settles in after it evaporates for those of you needing super bulletproof makeup you want to look into this. This is one of the best setting sprays I've ever used that also keeps shine away. And we are coming into those hot months pretty soon. So it's not something I'm going to use every day because it does have alcohol. And I typically don't like to use setting sprays with alcohol on a day-to-day -day basis, but it is nice to keep on hand for certain occasions when you just really, really need your makeup to stay locked in. Let's talk about what's on my lips. I just applied another layer of the new Merit Signature Matte Lipstick in the shade Classic, which is described as a neutral. This is a matte formula that has some nice hydrating ingredients, hyaluronic acid and sesame seed extract to hydrate, smooth and condition your lips. I'm not normally a fan of matte lipstick formulas because I find them to be very drying and my lips get dried out very easily. I normally don't like it when my lips start to feel like they have nothing on them because that usually means they start to feel dry. Now, prior to me reapplying this right before this segment, I had been wearing this lipstick for a around three hours with no reapplications. And it was probably 30 minutes before that when it started to just feel like my lips. But up until that point, my lips felt nicely hydrated. So I would say for this type of lightweight, thin formula, that hydration factor stays for a nice amount of time. I love that this is a buildable formula. I can apply it very sheer or I can build it up to full opacity like I have it now. Merit Original Signature Lipstick is one of my favorite formulas and I was really curious about this new matte formula because you know like I said I don't typically like matte lipsticks. This is a matte I can get on board with so I find these to be a nice lightweight comfortable matte formula. I am pleasantly surprised. I picked up the new House Labs PhD Hybrid Lip Glaze Plumping Gloss in the shade Guava. I was anxious to test this out. It's supposed to be a non-burning lip plumper, lip oil, lip balm, lip gloss, all in one product that's not sticky. And I feel like she's done a great job with most products that I've tried. So I was just really anxious to try these. I feel like the consistency of this is somewhere in between a lip oil and a lip gloss. You don't have any stickiness. It's not too thick. It's not too thin. Some lip oils are a little bit too thin for my liking and some lip glosses are a little bit too thick. This just falls somewhere in between. There is no scent. So if you are looking for this type of hybrid lip oil, lip balm, lip product with no scent, this might be your product. I feel like a lot of them are scented right now. The applicator is nice and cushy and comfortable. These are pleasant to apply. There is a hint of a tint. You can see it here on the back of my hand. You can see it when I apply it to my lips as well. I would say the tint does not last that long though, but even after the tint fades, my lips still feel nice and hydrated and conditioned. I don't really get that lip plumping look from it. It does 
smooth my lips, but I mean, I feel like I get that from most lip glosses and lip oils. It doesn't tingle, so I'll give it that. I don't need my lip plumpers to tingle, but it says it's got a poly plumper complex, which is a custom blend of maxi lip and volulip for visibly fuller lips. And I personally just don't notice that, but it's not necessarily a deal breaker. I still love the way my lips look and feel with this. It leaves my lips feeling supple and smooth and moisturized and I do love that tint and they're a pleasure to reapply. So I've been enjoying this. I just don't think it's a substitute for other lip plumpers that I have, but as far as a lip balm, lip oil, gloss hybrid product, it's very enjoyable. So that's my verdict on this. I don't know how others are feeling about it. Have you tried it yet? I would love to know your thoughts in the comments. I have kind of a hard to fit face when it comes to sunglasses. I have a very narrow, small face and most sunglasses are big and oversized. I was passing by the Key store. It is pronounced Key, by the way, if you've been wondering. And I decided to browse and I ended up picking up two pair. They were having a sale at the time if you bought two. I don't know if they are or not right now. I'll have the two styles that I got linked down below. But I just thought that these were really cute. They're probably both a little bit oversized for me, but not too much. Most of their styles are very oversized, but I always think they have such cute, trendy styles. I had a really helpful salesperson, and so she picked these out, and I'll just put them on here and kind of try and angle myself where I'm not reflecting too much. But this is such a different style for me, and I don't usually get black. I usually end up with some shade of brown or some kind of a warm tone, but the verdict was that I should get these. So I did, and I've just really been enjoying those for something a little bit different and for something a little bit more classic but with a twist I got these kind of geometric aviators that I thought were kind of cool and a little bit different so I've been liking both of these and both of these together even not on sale were about a third of the cost of my crew sunglasses so I feel a little bit better about that anyway and these are both really cute although they may still look big on me but that is just what I get with my face size. I like including lifestyle things in my favorites videos if they're things that really stand out to me and part of that is jewelry. I fell in love with these pieces from Dean Davidson. Their new Nomad collection is absolutely stunning. The ring that I've had on that you've probably seen throughout this video, the earrings and the necklace, they looked good online but online doesn't do them justice. I cannot get over how pretty they are and they go with so many things. It's like a neutral that's not a neutral. I could wear this with white. I mean, I could wear these with hot pink. It doesn't really matter. There are some really pretty pieces in this collection and there are quite a few pieces and I think it would be so pretty in the summertime paired with white or cream, it would really pop. And as always, you can save 15% off your first purchase with my code stephmarie 15 That link and code are always in my description box is for you. Let me know in the comments anything that stood out to you recently, good or bad. Sometimes I find my favorite products from reading through your comments. I love seeing your conversations. You may have noticed that there were no drugstore products in this video. That's because I'm doing an entire separate video just for drugstore because I had so many <laughs> products that stood out to me and some new products, specifically drugstore new products that I wanted to share with you. So be on the lookout for that video to come soon. If you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that or any new videos. And if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful in some way, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much as always for being here with me, for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.